How are you doing guys? Dr. Thompson here with Exemplify Health Center, your Wellness Way affiliate in Yorkville, Illinois. Hope you guys are having a great Monday evening. I'm just finishing up with patients. Yes, Mondays are very long days for me. And I wanted to jump on here and talk to you a little bit about this question that I got. Help, I have low vitamin D. So I'm gonna answer those questions. And a lot of times um, this was ans uh, asked in the Wellness Way Lifestyle group. If you're not a part of that, Go over there to Wellness Way, type it in, Wellness Way Lifestyle Group, and make sure that you ask to join that. Right now, there's about 12,000 people within that group. Uh, and so the doctors and Wellness Way in general is an awesome resource for you guys uh, on your journey to, uh, to, to living your best life when it comes to your health. So I wanted, uh, someone in the group had asked this question. They said, uh, please help. I go out in the sun. I live in Florida. I take... Uh, vitamin D as a supplement and yet here I am still having very low vitamin D and why would that be? So I'm going to answer that question for you and it really just comes down to a couple of different things and just understanding physiology when it comes to vitamin D. So guys, if you're watching right now, let me know where you're watching from, from Florida. Uh, we have people from all over. I always love to see where people are watching from. So where? let me know where you're watching from. And then also, if you do have a Wellness Way doctor, uh, type in who your Wellness Way doctor is. I'm always, uh, I'm always encouraged to see you know, if you have a Wellness Way doctor. And if you don't, let us know. We'll help you find one for you. It could even be me, all right? So let's talk about vitamin D. So we had this question, I'm supplementing with vitamin D. I'm going out in the sun, and yet I still have low vitamin D. How on earth could that be? And I'm gonna show you why you could do all of those different things, but you still can be critically low in vitamin D. So why, why is vitamin D so important, guys? Well, you guys, will, you guys will see that, you know, there'll be a supplement that comes out and it will take, you know, it will take uh, society by storm and it will become the next fad. And vitamin D probably 15 years ago became a massive, massive fad. And you know, you'll see like the next thing will become the massive, massive fad, like uh, you know, CBD oil will be will become a fad. And you'll just see that we just keep recycling and going through and through, and you know, it just becomes like this brand new idea. And the reality is, is that um, it's not that vitamin D isn't necessarily needed. It's just said that sometimes the effects of vitamin D can be overstated. Um, same thing with some of those things. Not to say that I, I don't recommend CBD oil. But I don't think necessarily that everyone should be uh, you know, bathing in it because even supplements won't take all of your problems away, okay? Vitamin D, if you have sufficiency, it's not gonna make you grow wings and be able to fly. It's just gonna get the body back to sufficiency. However, I know people who have been deficient, they get back up to sufficiency and they say, wow, I feel so much better. I didn't realize how deficient I actually was. Now guys, the best way to know if you're vitamin D deficient is to measure it. And I'll go over with you where you guys, your target number should be at when it comes to vitamin D and I'll explain to you why. But if you have a vitamin D deficiency, the thing with vitamin D is that it is responsible for over 1500 genetic functions inside of your body. So it's very important that you do have adequate levels of vitamin D but also, we don't want you necessarily to be just adequate because the recommended, uh, recommend, uh, recommended dose, or not even a dose, but your levels of where you should be at are really just to prevent rickets. So a lot of medically what they talk about with vitamin D is really just about having healthy bones, but we know that there's so many other functions when it comes to vitamin D. Uh, fu you know, functions especially, especially, especially when it comes to the immune system. So if you do in fact have a vitamin D deficiency and medically they'll call a vitamin D deficiency of under 30. So if it's under 30 nanograms per deciliter, you do in fact have a vitamin D deficiency. And usually when they just test it, they'll say, you need to take 50,000 IUs for two weeks, we'll retest again. As long as that happens, you know, then you're gonna be fine. We do in fact test a lot of people's vitamin Ds because it is so intimate when it comes to the, the immune system, when it comes to autoimmunity, uh, when it comes to thyroid function, when it comes to a lot of different functions. But just remember, it's not going to make you grow wings and it's not gonna you know, replace having a bad lifestyle. 
So if you have a vitamin D deficiency, look at just some of the potential things that could happen. Number one, uh, depression and schizophrenia. So even having low vitamin D can make someone depressed. It can make someone have uh, schizophrenia. It can contribute to those symptoms. Circulatory, high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, uh, having chronic muscle aches and muscle weakness. And there could be other things that could cause muscle aches and muscle weakness. Being on a cholesterol medication uh, can do it. Uh, being uh, deficient in uh, CoQ10, uh, being deficient in potassium, magnesium, sodium can cause muscle aches. So there's so many different things that can cause it, but vitamin D can certainly contribute to it. How about asthma? How about wheezing? Because now you're talking about your immune system, type one diabetes, which is an autoimmune reaction to uh, the specific cells that are producing insulin within the pancreas uh, and rickets and even osteoporosis. Now guys, when it comes to osteoporosis, we think it's just a calcium issue. It is much, much more than just calcium. It's actually calcium absorption. It's enough stomach acid, vitamin D, vitamin K, uh, things like magnesium. So it's much more than that. And also needing a stimulus, a stimulus in order for uh, to stimulate the bones to even want to lay down more bone. That's where actually, you know, doing uh, impact type exercises and weightlifting and things like that. You need a stimulus. If you don't have a stimulus, there's no reason for the bones to lay down or constantly be, uh, be actually uh, remodeling. So when you look at this, this is just some of the things that vitamin D is responsible for. But what's interesting is that vitamin D will influence not only autoimmunity in relation to what are known as suppressor T cells, but it also is involved in other T cells formation, including even CD4 and CD8 cells. And when that gets low, now you're looking at things like cancer, uh, the flu, maybe another COV, et cetera, et cetera, and tuberculosis. So a lot of these things are really due to either autoimmunity or they're actually, it can cause uh, problems with not having a sufficient immune system. So vitamin D is just something that's very easy that, uh, that you can, can do to get those levels up back to sufficiency that can have potentially a profound impact on your health, on your energy, on your immune system, okay? And in fact, this is a, a pretty old slide and I've had this for 10, 12 years or so, uh, but this looks at your vitamin D levels. Uh, you can actually just uh, uh, Google this and you will see this. I would just type in disease incidence prevention by serum 25 OH uh, uh, D levels. And you can see all the different research articles that they put at the bottom. Basically when they look at this though, is they look at your vitamin D levels and then look at, at once they're at those specific levels, the decrease in incidence solely based on vitamin D in different types of condition, diseases, autoimmune conditions, and cancer. So for example, for rickets, for you to get a literally almost a 100% reduction of rickets, which is basically the bone soft, uh, they are very soft and they tend to bend, You'll see that in kids when we had no idea what vitamin D was. Well, if you get your levels to 20, uh, then you will prevent rickets 99% of the time. So this is why when they look at you know being medically deficient, they're looking at it at about 30 and below, but you notice that there is gonna be a tremendous, a tremendous benefit from getting them uh, to a higher level. For example, multiple sclerosis, Getting the levels up to 54, 55, they saw a 54% reduction in multiple sclerosis by having your vitamin D levels at 54. Uh, in addition to that, type one diabetes, 66% less when you get your uh, uh, vitamin D levels to 52. Breast cancer, how about this? Getting it to 50 to 52, you have an 83% decreased risk of breast cancer, decreased incident of breast cancer. I mean, my goodness, we're coming into, you know, in about six weeks, we're coming into Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and they're talking about we need to be screening, we need to be doing mammograms, we need to be doing prophylactic removal of the breasts, uh, but no one's talking about, well, maybe we should be looking at the immune system, vitamin D, measuring the different types of immune system cells. And oh, by the way, doing a Dutch test and look at uh, your estradiol and your different estrone and your estriol metabolism and how it's metabolized because there's specific estrogens that can cause you to have a very bad day 
that are mutagenic to your uh, breast tissue, and then you have a decrease in immune system function and specific immune cells that can kill off those growths, uh, then you have a recipe for breast cancer proliferation. But even just having um, your uh, vitamin D levels up to 52, 83% decreased risk in breast cancer, yet no one is talking about it. We're not talking really about, we're talking about early detection of disease that's already there. And we're talking about within our office in the wellness way, we're talking about let's not even get early detection of disease that's there. Let's do early prevention of disease that may be there down the road. So you can see that getting adequate vitamin D is super important for so many different things, but I love it specifically when it comes to your immune system especially and how it plays in with the dance that the immune system is doing, uh, You know, really just making sure that it's working enough and making sure that it's suppressing certain things because both of those things, autoimmunity or you're having a suppressed immune system, which basically is going to be cancer later on the road. So let's talk about where you get your vitamin D and the organs needed, the organs needed in order to convert vitamin D into its active form. So this is why it's so crazy. You get actually, you know, you used to only be able to get your vitamin D from sunlight. So you get uh, UV radiation. So UV radiation will actually come onto the skin and will then cause a release of vitamin D from the skin, okay? So you get it, the production happens at that skin, which is beyond me. So you need radiation in order to produce vitamin D, which it boggles my mind that we are so absolutely scared of the sun. Well, if you get uh, sun exposure, you're gonna get skin cancer. And I'm like, that's the silliest thing that I've ever heard. Now, you are not supposed to get sunburnt because the more times you get burnt, the more times you're gonna create free radical damage that can then create the tissue damage. So you're not supposed to get burnt, but you do in fact need the sun in order to stimulate vitamin D production underneath the skin. So you get it from the sun, or the other place that you can get it is from a dietary supplement. So let's say you're getting it from the sun. Well, that doesn't turn into vitamin D, it goes into what uh, is called 25-hydroxy vitamin D, that has to be converted from vitamin D3 in the liver. Now pay attention to that because now you're seeing, oh, I guess I need a healthy liver in order for me to be able to convert vitamin D3 into its active usable form. But here's the other thing, you also need, you also need healthy kidneys in order to produce what's known as 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. So you need a healthy liver and you also need healthy kidneys so that it can impact the, at the cellular level. Now watch this, I want you to think of this. So you need a healthy liver, you need healthy kidneys, uh, you also need the skin or you need the sunlight. What do you think guys would happen if I decided I'm gonna slather my, my child or myself in sunscreen all the time? I am blocking vitamin D production. But not only that, you're gonna be putting things on the skin that will be going through the skin uh, that can have potentially bad chemicals that can hurt and damage the liver. In fact, one of the things that's happened since we have swore off the sun and, and decided that we're gonna slather everyone uh, in sunscreen is you've actually seen an increase in skin cancer because of what trying to block vitamin D is doing to our immune systems in general. So think about this. You need, either if you're getting it orally or if you're getting it through your skin, you need a healthy liver. Now here's what's even more important is that if you're taking it orally, this is a fat soluble vitamin and where you are having most of your absorption is through the bile acids, all right? So the bile acids. Now this should be your first clue. If you don't have a healthy liver, it's gonna be very hard to convert vitamin D. If you don't have your gallbladder, it's gonna be very hard for you to be able to absorb dietary vitamin D3. And this is why literally every single woman who comes into her office that does not have their gallbladder, they are never producing enough bile to be able to absorb, absorb oral vitamin D. Now, the other thing is, is if you lost your gallbladder, you probably don't have a healthy liver either because where bile production is happening in the liver, the gallbladder is just a storage tank for it. 
And so you, you then have a problem with even converting it, even if you're going out into the sun uh, and stimulating vitamin D3 production. Now you see where I'm going through this, right? Is that liver, gallbladder, uh, and, not ha and having bad kidney function all can leave you severely deficient in vitamin D3 despite going out in the sun and despite um, taking it orally. And this is the reason why you still could be deficient even though you think you're doing everything that you can. Now, why do I have vi low vitamin D? Well, let's ask these questions. So I don't know how many of you have ever gotten a vitamin D test, but you probably should if we're talking about a potentially 83% less risk of breast cancer by having it at a certain level, having a decrease in multiple sclerosis or Crohn's disease or any kind of autoimmunity, you need levels that are sufficient. So here's a question. I get tested, I have low vitamin D. So here's my first question. Are you going out into the sun enough, all right? I guys go out into the sun at least 30 minutes during the summertime, 30 minutes up to an hour to an hour and a half per day. I try to get out in the sun per day. I just got my levels tested. My levels are at 82. So my levels are at 82 right in the sweet spot. So yes, I'm going out in the sun. And yes, I also supplement with vitamin D3. And um, I supplement about 5,000 IUs uh, per day. Does that mean that everyone should get 5,000 IUs per day? No, because it's really gonna be based on testing. Some people, uh, if everything is firing on all cylinders, giving them maybe 1,500 to 2,000 will be sufficient, but I've had some people, you have to give them 25,000 just to get their levels up to maybe 30 or 40, and the reason why can be because of their liver and their gallbladder function. The other thing is, is you know, something basic is, are you even taking enough oral vitamin D? So a lot of people who take oral vitamin D, sometimes they're just not even taking enough. They're taking, uh, you know, basically a thousand IUs, maybe 1500 IUs. And for some of you, you just aren't taking enough. But let's say that you are getting enough sunlight. Let's say that you are taking, you know, 5,000, 10,000 IUs, and it's still not pushing you up to where you need to be then really what you have to consider is, how is my liver functioning? And also, how's my gallbladder functioning? Do I even have my gallbladder? Because if you don't, it makes it a lot harder to be able to uh, absorb oral vitamin D3. Here's the next thing. How's my kidney function? So how are my kidneys functioning? Um, so one of the things that you can see, if your kidneys are really starting to have a bad day, is look at what's known as your glomerular filtration rate. It's kind of a mouthful, your GFR. And if you see that that GFR starts to creep under 100, you start to see it's down to 70, 60, 50, well, it means that you can have some kidney inflammation or you can be having some, uh, due to the inflammation, some scarring of the kidneys that can decrease the amount that the kidneys are able to filter. That's one way that you can look at, gosh, you know, are my kidneys actually doing what they're supposed to? Another thing that you can do in order to look at your kidney function is um, if you start seeing like a high blood urea nitrogen, meaning the liver processing proteins is gonna produce nitrogen, the kidneys are responsible for getting rid of it. So if you start to see your bun going up, that means that the kidneys probably aren't doing very good as well. And remember that final conversion needs to happen at the kidneys. So a lot of times we don't talk about the kidneys all that often, but the kidneys are really responsible for a lot of different functions, including uh, cortisol function, blood pressure control, I mean, a lot of different things. And then the last thing that I wanna to talk to you about too is what is your body fat percentage? Can we talk about this? Can we be honest about this? Because clinically, one of the things that I have found is that it's very hard for people when they have a high body fat for them to get their body or to get their vitamin D levels back up to sufficiency. Now remember, where do you store your vitamin D? It's a fat soluble uh, vitamin, so it's stored within fat cells. So you could have a lot of vitamin D that is bound within your actual fat cells, which is why when people start to lose weight or we take them through detox and they might lose a lot of body fat, we'll probably peek inside and look at that those vitamin D levels because clinically, you can release a lot of vitamin D and those levels can go up even without supplementing or even without going out in the sun because remember, it's a fat-soluble vitamin. 
Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K are things that can be stored within the fat cells. Things like B vitamins, vitamin C, those vitamins are water soluble, which means you really have to get them every single day and it's nearly impossible to overdose on those things. Now, have I seen some people be uh, vitamin D toxic? Yes, I have seen people be vitamin D toxic. I've seen people at 150, I've seen some 120s, I've seen some 130s. I think the highest I've seen is at 160. And the interesting thing about that uh, was that they thought, well, if a little vitamin D is good, then a, then a lot of vitamin D is better. And they have been supplementing for about, tw uh, like literally a year, 25,000 and going out in the sun and then going on the tanning bed and doing that and their levels were through the roof. You get over about 110, 120, you can start to have heart palpitations you know, at that time. So if you're too high, typically we say no vitamin D at all, don't take any orally and you know, don't do that for about 90 days. And if you do that for about 90 days, usually the half-life of, of vitamin D is about 90 days, which means if you're at 120 within you know, uh, 90 days, it'll be down to about 60 or 65 in general, okay? So this can be why you are, despite doing all of that, you still have vitamin D. Are you getting enough sunlight? Are you taking enough oral vitamin D? But now let's get into, how's your liver doing? Do you have a gallbladder? How's your gallbladder function? How's your kidney function? And then also, what's your body fat percentage? So if you have a lot of body fat, poor kidney function, poor liver function, this is why you could take this a lot of times so the cows come home, but the conversion of it is just gonna be terrible, that it's not pushing the needle to where it needs to be, which leads me into this. How, what should your vitamin D levels be at? Now, if you have no issues going on, you know, like I wanna you know, make sure that I'm doing this as far as prevention and things like that, I would say if you can get it to 50 or 60, you're gonna be doing pretty good. But if you have issues in the past, like cancer, autoimmunity, things like that, we will say 70 to 80. In fact, for some people, get it up to 90 to 100, okay? So I really try to get most people to be within 70 to 80 nanograms per deciliter. I just measured mine, I was at 82. I know I had just measured my wife not too long ago and she was in the 70s. Um, and this is really important with people have autoimmunity, really important because uh, the number one autoimmunity is actually the thyroid gland, which we try to get people to get, their, um, get those vitamin D levels up as quickly as possible. So hopefully guys, this makes a lot of sense that like vitamin D is important. Vitamin D is intimate, intimately involved with so many different functions inside the body and that it it's becomes a lot more complex than just going out in the sun and just taking it orally because if you're doing that, it's not working, then you have to look liver, kidneys, gallbladder, body fat percentage, and look at those things and see if you're missing something. And that's why you start improving the function of the liver. Uh, you start making, if you don't have a gallbladder, taking a bowel replacement, um, you know, doing things in order to help with kidney function, especially losing body fat, all those things can start to push the needle quite a bit. So hopefully I know we had a couple of people who have asked that question. And if that helped you, make sure you, you give me a thumbs up, make sure that said that helps so much. And then make sure guys, please share this video because vitamin D, as we go into the winter time, vitamin D, no sunlight or less sun exposure, less direct rays from the sun, which means that you probably do in fact need to start supplementing come September uh, in, in order to keep those vitamin D levels up. Because remember, it is intimately involved with the immune system, which is one of the reasons why people get sick in the winter time where there's less sun exposure because vitamin D levels go down and vitamin D, again, like we said, is intimately involved with immune system function, not only with T cells, but also suppressor T cells, especially when it comes to what's known as the adaptive immune system. So hopefully guys, that helps you out. And we are going to announce this right now. I know that we've been playing around with this and we said it might happen, it may not happen. Uh, but coming up in Yorkville, Illinois, Saturday, September 25th, 10 o'clock, uh, we will be doing, we were gonna be doing autoimmunity and I told my staff, nope, get rid of it. We are gonna talk about the immune system because I am absolutely astounded at how many parents have no idea how the immune system works and how to have a healthy immune system, not only for them, but for their parents. And that is not, guys, a slam on you. This is just, we were not taught this ever. We were not taught this in school. We we're not taught this in health class. We weren't even taught it in college. Um, we were just taught, 
ah, here's the immune system. If it's low, just, I don't know, just start to do this. And most people, you just need a basic understanding, of understanding your immune system, about the three different types of the immune system. You got the innate, you got the adaptive, you got barriers, and understanding that how you need to build those different parts of the immune system so that your immune system can be strong again. That you could have an immune system that has sufficiency that you don't need to be pressured to take some kind of COV, et cetera, et cetera, uh, a gene therapy, that you don't need it, that you can resist any virus. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's COV, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter if it's the flu. It doesn't matter if it's a, a, a cold. It doesn't matter if it's a bacteria that you were giving, given a, an immune system that knows how to work. But the problem is, guys, is we have lost the confidence. We've lost the belief that we were given an immune system that knows exactly what to do. It doesn't need help. It just needs to not be interfered with. And the reason why we have kids today who have an immature immune system, why we have parents today that have an immature immune system because we're doing it completely backwards. We're afraid of exposure. We're dousing ourselves with Purell, and we think that uh, inserting specific antigens straight through the skin and bypassing all the natural layers of infection are somehow going to produce health and produce a better immune system. And we know, and I'll show you research, that it is not working out one bit. Saturday, September 25th, 10 o'clock here, Exemplify Health Center. I hope I have to move that to a bigger venue. I think that I should, because we should have every man, woman, child, every parent, if we just had half of the parents in Yorkville, we should have two to 3,000 parents here to learn about where the immune system is. We're taught we need to start making our immune system strong again. We, you know, if we wanna make America strong, we wanna make America healthy, we have to start with making immune systems strong again. So we'll guys, we'll make sure that we start putting up the links on how you can get registered for that talk. It'll be at 10 o'clock and we are gonna make so much sense for you that you will leave inspired and be like, I wish I would learn this. And not only that, I wish my kids and I wish my grandparents, or I wish my parents would have known this as well. So we will let you guys know and we'll, when we're ready, We'll put the links up at the top of this page. Guys, I hope you learned a lot when it comes to vitamin D. And vitamin D is just one of the things that can help the immune system. There's a lot of others that can, but you don't want to take 19 different supplements because you can measure the immune system. You can measure the immune system and know how to feed the immune system to make sure that you restore it back to sufficiency. Guys, I hope you have a great Monday. I appreciate your comments. I always read through them after this uh, live talk. And I always try to respond to every single one of them. So I appreciate you guys being on here. Please make sure you share this video about vitamin D. We will see you guys very soon. I won't be going live on Saturday because we have our man up. We're doing an obstacle course on Saturday. So I may go live from that because we are going to, we're going to do something special. It's going to be, don't tell them. It's going to be a hill. It's a tobogganing hill. It's very big and it's very intimidating, but we're going to have about 15 men who are going to go up and down that hill. It's going to be absolutely epic and I probably will join them too and to suffer with them. So guys, be well. I'll talk to you guys very soon. I might jump on before Saturday. You guys have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you guys soon.